Hey, what's going on, guys? Andrew here, back at you in the video. And as I promised last week, um, coming back at you with a, another video of top 30 um, standalone slasher films. So that means uh, this cannot be this this these films cannot have a sequel, and they also cannot have a remake. So that that narrows it down a little bit. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, so without further ado, I am going to get into this list. Um, yeah, so let's see here. The one that just missed, but honestly I feel like should be mentioned, is Camp Dread. Honestly, it, it just missed, but... You know, I, I don't know. I like this film. I, I You know, Daniel Harris has a glorified cameo. She's in like two minutes. But honestly, I find this character's fun. And the kills aren't overly that great, though. And that's the thing. It, it really doesn't, like, bleed camp or anything like that. And it, it just, I don't know, it falls a little bit short. But I still have fun with it. But coming in at number 30. <laughs> this is a rather unique film. To make my slasher list, but you got Karis Hell. <laughs> now, this is a killer carousel unicorn film. <laughs> As you can imagine, this is one of those uh, so bad it's good films, and yeah, it's just a load of fun. It just, yeah, it's not overly that great, but. I mean, it's it's fun. It's got some cool, uh, fun kills, and man, it has some laugh out loud characters in it. Yeah, just fun stuff. Up next is Chopping Mall. Um, I don't want you to see another film on this because it's gonna make a appearance, but uh, I guess I'll just do this. Um, yeah, uh, Chopping Mall. Yeah, it's just one of those films that, I mean, it takes place in a mall, obviously, and um, it's got killer robots. So, yeah, it's just one of those ones where, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. Lots and lots of fun. Um, yeah. So, number 28 is Killer Rack. <laughs> Yes, this is exactly what it looks like. It's about a killer set of boobs. Um, yeah, this is just a load, load of fun. Just, um, yeah, it, basically the girl gets uh, breast implants, and those implants go crazy and kill people. Just, uh, yeah, lots of, lots of fun, lots of laugh out loud moments. Uh yeah. Um, 27? Oh, no. Um, 26. Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Now, this is a made-for-TV slasher film. Uh, the only one of its kind that I'm aware of, uh, if I'm recalling correctly. I can't remember another one. Uh, yeah, at least another one that made this list. I don't think there is one. But, yeah, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Just a... Really, really enjoyable film. I just rewatched this a little a uh, couple days ago, and um, yeah, really good characters. It's a very good revenge story that plays out like a slasher. Obviously, with a made-for-TV film, they don't really show that much gore, so it's honestly, it's you know, it feels kind of cheap that way. But you know, it is what it is. It's it's a good film. Um, number twenty-five is. Jess Franco's Bloody Moon. Yeah, this takes place at a, like a, um, I know it takes place at like a schoolgirl, like a, a Spanish schoolgirl. It's like a schoolhouse for Spanish girls. I, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but yeah, it's honestly a quick watch. It's like 77 minutes, 78 minutes with, with credit, without credits. Um, yeah, it's got really, really gory kills, and yeah, it's got some mean-spirited stuff, and obviously some sleaze from Jess Franco. Can't go wrong with that, to be honest. Um, number 24, another, uh, one that I picked up from, uh, Arrow, is Evil Ed. Now, this is a perfect film to watch, um, this is a perfect film to watch for, like, a marathon or something like that, hint, hint, Austin, um, 
yeah, just loads and loads of fun. Not as over the top as you expect, though. It's it, you know, it's pretty down to earth, it, which to be honest hurts my enjoyment for it a little bit. Um, I went back and forth which one to put first, but this one got a little bit of the edge just because it's so. Um, it eventually gets over the top and pretty fun. Uh, yeah, so that was 24. 23 is Lost After Dark. Yeah, it's a really, really fun film. Um, really enjoyable 80s throwback film. It really feels like it's from the 80s. Robert Patrick's in this film for some random reason. And the one and only Rick Rosenthal is the sheriff at the ending. Um, he directed what's my favorite horror film and my least favorite horror film in Halloween 2 and Halloween H uh, Re Resurrection. Wow, did I just almost say H2O? Wow. Okay, but yeah, it's a fun film. Got some pretty cool kills, and the killer looks like the Ripper from uh, My Soul to Take. So that film might make an appearance on this this list. Um, yeah, it's number 23, I believe. Um, and we're going to go with Pieces. Um, yeah, this film, man, it is just, whew, this is just as fun as it gets. Just, uh, <laughs> the chop, bad chop silly joke in this and the killer walking around with the chainsaw behind his back to kill somebody. Just hilariously bad moments in this film. The acting is atrocious. It's bad. But to be honest, it just plays out really fun. Can't go wrong with it. Now, number 22 is Hide and Go Shriek. This is an 88 Films release. And, yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, the transfer for it's really good. But, yeah, it's uh, one of those really good, um, you know, 80s slasher films. I can't remember what year this is released in. Uh, I can't see anything. Um, oh, well. Um, let's see if this is going to bug me, actually. Um. Yeah, not saying anything. Um, this is actually a brand new release from them. Uh, really, really good stuff. I, I like this film. Uh, really fun characters. The kills aren't overly that great, but honestly, the kill the characters make it that worth it. Honestly, I can see this one really going up the more I watch it. I've only watched it once. Just got it in like last month. <laughs> up next is a film honestly i was like is this really a slasher but to be honest it really does come off as like a slasher definitely a comedic slasher all comedic which is santa's sleigh um yeah santa's sleigh watch it if you have not seen it um it is just whew. up next is um blood rage it's not cranberry sauce. That is said about seven times throughout the film. Um, yeah, man, this is a just all around and out unbelievably fun film. Um, got really good characters. I don't know where this has such a unique, unique feel to it. Just, I don't know. Interesting. Um, yeah, so up next, you saw this one. This is kind of the start of some of the ones that you'll see, you've will see you seen on my last one. And, of course, these ones were mostly uh, just kind of filling out the list of ones that didn't make my top 30 um, original slashers list. Um, yeah, which this one is Death Spa. As I said before, really fun characters, good premise, takes place in a spa, so can't really go wrong with a film like that. Um yeah, just really good stuff. Um, coming in next, again, I've lost count. I always lose count in videos like this, but um, that is Intruder. Yeah, really good stuff, as I said. Fun characters. My only problem with this one is the characters die off way too early. I think there's like a whole like 40 minutes of this film that is just the character. Like 40-some-odd minutes. I just... Yeah, it's it's really not that enjoyable to be honest with when all the characters die. But honestly, it's really good before that. After this is bloody bloody Bible camp. Yeah, as I said in the last video, really fun stuff like this Catholic Bible camp type thing. Really good stuff. Uh, Terror Train is up next. 
fun, fun stuff. Again, these ones don't really, uh, again, I'm thinking, this one's been rumored to have a remake, and honestly, I really would be interested to see what a remake would look like of this film. Um, this one has a really unique-looking cinematography. Can't remember who did that, the cinematography, but he actually went on to do really, really great things. Um, it actually doesn't say on this one. This is one, I think, one of the earlier Screen Factor releases. Um, but yeah, really good stuff. Uh, this actually says 1979 on this. I've heard 1980 for a long time, but yeah. 79, not making my top 10 70s. But, uh, yeah. Up next is a really, really fun, um, indie film that is called The Barn. Um, yeah, it's getting a Blu-ray release this year. I will not be picking it up, but um, yeah, I'm really uh, content with this. As I said, I'll show this again. Ooh, man, this is really, really good stuff. This is a... Oh, I guess this is an Indiegogo exclusive, because it does say Indiegogo on it and stuff. But yeah, pick this up, man, if you can. See if you could find the two-disc edition to see get that game. It's fun. Up next is, yet again, another one that I feel like could use a good remake that uh, would be interesting. Dorm the Drip Blood. Yeah, this is uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. This is 14 on my list of standalone slashers. Um, really, really good stuff. I uh, mean, again, the more you watch it, the more you'd like it. If you didn't like it the first time, again, I re really, really recommend re-watching it because, uh, yeah, this is another one of those where it gets better with uh, re-watches. Up next is Valentine. Again, this is number 12, I believe, now. Again, I man, I lost track. I keep losing track. Um, yeah, just really, really good stuff. Um, really fun characters. All of that uh, I said in the last video. Up next is Cherry Falls. Just another one of those um, really, really fun slasher films. Man, it would have been amazing to see a... Um, a uh, director's cut of this film. Unfortunately, it looks like we'll never see a director's cut because the Screen Factor didn't get it. I don't think it's ever happening. But yeah, this one just uh, there's a lot, a lot of uh, gore and uh, nudity taken out of this film. In fact, this doesn't have any nudity whatsoever, and the gore is very minimum. But you know, it's it's whatever. But to be honest, it still has the characters are really fun in this and. You know, I still enjoy it nonetheless. One of those ones I need to watch soon because it's a really fun uh, film that's, you know, high school. Um, up next is Hellbent. Again, this is, uh, like I said, the first, um, the first LGBT slasher film or horror film in general. But it's, it's a really, really good stuff. I really like it. Um, I heard that May is also another one as well. Um, I, I'm actually planning on watching that one Sunday night, so I'll see what I like about it then. Um, but yeah, so up next is Stage Fright. Just, I mean, I can't get enough of this film. I love that. I watched it like three times over summer. Just unbelievably fun stuff. Um. Really, really well shot film too for it being in the eighty or being uh, you know being a low budget slasher. Up next, going back to the Criterion eight pack is of course Slaughter High. Oh man, um, this is number nine, and um, yeah, I can't, I cannot, not simply wait until that uh, um, Blu-ray comes out. Just um, loads and loads of fun. Uh, yeah, it's just. This Vestron release is going to be... I keep saying Criterion for them. Vestron. Um, going to be really good stuff, I I, I hope. Um, up next, I um, believe it's number eight. Um, yeah, eight is Shocker. Uh, yeah, just unbelievably fun stuff. Um, I absolutely love this film. I don't understand what people don't like about this film. It's got everything you want in a great soundtrack, awesome killer, really, really fun stuff. It, it Honestly, I feel like easily 10 minutes could have been taken off of this film. Um, but, you know, it, it, as it stands, it's still a fun film. If 10 minutes were off of it, it honestly probably would, would make our Hall of Fame. 
the Woodsboro Bros, but we'll see if it does still. Up next is All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. Now, I honestly don't know if this one will make our uh, the Woodsboro Bros Hall of Fame or not, but yeah, this one to me, I love the characters. I love the way this film is shot. I love the, the it's so unique. It's such a unique um, uh, film. Uh, yeah, up next is The Burning. Yeah, th this one here, just, yeah, you can't really go wrong with it. Uh, really good stuff. Um, again, another film that I feel like would be interesting to see remade. Um, yeah, it just would be interesting. Um, <laughs> yet another film that I feel like would be interesting to see remade is my number five which is The Initiation. I would love to see this, especially since, you know, we got a lot of these, like, um, films that have a lot to do with, like, you know, psychological, where they're, like, um, you know, the end of the film is, like, you know, it was all in their heads and stuff like that. I feel like this film would really, really benefit from uh, one of those, uh, you know, kinds of films like that. Just kind of interesting to see about that one, but... You know, interesting. I'm actually watching this one tonight, so we'll see. Um, I can't wait to watch that. It's super fun stuff. Um, up next is, man, yeah, is Killer Workout. Woo! Uh, number four. Woo! Killer Workout. Yeah, this is a so bad it's good film. And um, you, if you like cheesy, bad 80s films, you would be do yourself really good to watch this one. Do yourself a favor and watch that. Number three is... Ooh, Shredder. I'm sure you're, if you're going down the list of the ones that I did last time, which honestly, it kind of plays out the way it is. is like It's kind of um, anticlimactic because if you're doing your countdown and no you know, are pretty good with knowing slasher films. You know what's two and one on my list. But yeah, Shredder, what can I say, man? I love this film, man. It's just such a fun film. It's ski resort film, and it's just snowboarders, fun characters, awesome stuff. Number two, again, another film that I would be interested to see remade. Um, starring Chloe Grace Moretz, of course. <laughs> Um, is Final Exam. Maybe when I get to be a filmmaker myself, that I should, uh, that should be my number one task, is to remake Final Exam. But yeah, man, this is such a great film. Um, not a great film, but it's, it's got a, such a, it's not a bad film, especially for the budget. It's actually pretty well done, but, you know, the, the sound is off on this and stuff, you know, they, you know, it's, you know, but, uh, yeah, just really, really atmospheric stuff. I really like this. I really wish they would have done, like... This is a Scream Factory release, but it's, like... Um, I don't know. I wish they would have done, like, a, you know, a collector's edition of this. But, whatever. Um, and number one, of course, is... We all know this one's coming up, and my soul to take. I'm not going to talk about this one, because I've talked about it infinite amount of times. But, you know, that's my number one. All right, so that's going to do it for today, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this list. Um, I enjoyed the hell out of making it. And, um, yeah, this is going to be one of those ones where, uh, yeah, let me know what you think again. Like, let me know what you thought about some of these films. Again, um, this was a standalone list that could not have a remake or a sequel. And to my knowledge, none of these has a remake or a sequel, unless it's, you know, something I don't know, but... Um, yeah, uh, let me know what you think, guys, and, uh, as I said before, um, coming up in the next couple of days, you'll be seeing, I'm starting with my 31 days of Halloween, and that will be, uh, 31 films that I have never seen before. Again, that'll start on September 30th and on, end on October 30th. So, that'll be in a complete month. That'll be 31 days. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to take all of Halloween to kind of... Um, I'll probably release a special Halloween video on that day or something like that. But, yeah, be looking out for those guys. Uh, take care. Peace.